Hey everybody and welcome to Tying Tuesdays. Brady here, gonna tie a dry fly. This is an adult chronomid. I feel like a lot of times people are focused on either the emerging or the uh, larva, the blood chronomids, uh, but they do hatch and there's opportunity to, to get some fish to take off the top as well. So tying up a, a nice natural, um, or to match the naturals, a nice little dry fly, a fun one to have and a good one to keep in your box. All right, so we have our finished fly in the vise, an example of an adult chronomid here. We'll go ahead and spin one. Starting out, this is a bit of a larger dry. So we're tying a size 12 today. Your lake bugs are gonna tend to be larger than your river bugs typically. And we have a nice dry fly hook, the classic Tiemco 100, but this is the spear point. Barbless version. Sorry, super point, rather. And keeping it simple, we're gonna start with our black thread. This is UTC 70. And we can get that going right behind the hook eye. And walk on down the shank here. And we'll go right into tying in that tail. And the tail today is gonna to be just a little bit of grizzly hackle. I'm gonna pick a feather off of my cape here I want a little bit of a larger feather. It's not gonna be gauged to Palmer on this fly. We're just gonna tie it right off of the back. So kind of grab one that feels appropriate, good depth to it. You can kind of utilize your, your hook gape to sort of measure that out. You know, get one that's around two thirds or half size of that hook gape. And then we'll measure the length of it here right on the hook there and we can transfer it and secure it down check our length before we walk back and put down our locking wraps on it to keep that from moving around so just a nice easy tail off of the back there and then we'll take our thread on forward over top covering everything up and come in and trim that down give ourselves a nice even body underneath. And then we're gonna add in our backing material. On this one, it's gonna be some deer, I'm using some mule deer hair. I just like the coloration of it. It tends to be a little bit lighter than natural, than other deer anyway, more of like a comparadon deer. And we're gonna trim out a little bit of a bundle here. Again, kind of using that hook gape just to gauge how much material you want. And then we want to clean it out real good. And bring my comb today. So I'll do it with my fingers here and get as much of that under fur out as I can. And I'm also trying to pull out some of the shorter fibers that might exist in here. Anything that's broken, we need a full length clean bundle here. And then I'm gonna flip it over so that the tips are facing towards the eye. I'm going to clip them short just to get a nice square tie-in point. And then we will grab that with our thread right on top of the hook and walk our way back. I'm going to try and do it a little bit more cleanly. This mule hair can be somewhat brittle. You can bite into it to the point where it'll break on you, so be aware of that. And if you are gonna run into anything that breaks and that you want to come out of there, if you can do it prior to getting all the way back to the tail, that's ideal because then you can come in and clip them short and then wrap over top of them and get it sort of cleaned up and out of the way. We're looking good here. So I'll walk on back and again, don't cinch too hard. You wanna snug down on it, but you don't wanna bite into it so much that you're breaking these fibers. And then we can walk back forward, snug everything down, and then back one more time. And we're gonna add in our underbody here, just some super fine dubbing. So we'll get a little bit of wax on the thread. Don't always do that, but it can help. And then a little bit of wax on my fingers too, just to manipulate the materials with. Try to avoid, I used to use a lot of saliva. And in place of that, I started just sort of waxing my fingers a little bit, 
and that's worked really well for me. But we're gonna noodle up a good healthy body here and black super fine dubbing. Give ourselves plenty to work with. Try to keep a nice consistent noodle to tie in. So we'll do our starting wraps right on the back and then just touching wraps forward. Trying to keep, again, a nice smooth body, a slight taper. They're not they're pretty slender flies overall, adult chronomids. Dub up a little more. And we're gonna work just past that halfway point here. So I left a little bit of a bump kind of where I'm gonna end just before that. About so. Kind of see how that looks. Proportionally, we'll go a little bit further. Finish that off right there. There we are. So then once we're happy with that positioning, just gonna bring that hair right over the top. I like to sort of let it kind of find its place to get as many of those hairs nice and straight so that they're not kind of all over each other. This gives a cleaner look when it's all said and done. We can secure that in place with some locking wraps, a couple in front of it, and trim out that extra. And then if you want, you can come back and undo a couple of those front wraps and smash all of that down underneath your thread. And then also work on sort of cleaning this transition. So we're just gonna smooth that transition a little bit for our hackle feather. And this hackle feather is going to be tied in more traditionally. So we're going to find a true to size 12 feather here. You can just take your feather and throw it in there and see how far down that's going to be. That looks pretty good. Got the right one off the gate. And clip off the bottom, pull some of those barbels back. Maybe trim one or two, gives you a little bit of tack dog areas to grab there. And I'm just gonna capture that right on top and do two wraps front to back, two wraps back to front. And then I'm just gonna bend that stem down, make sure it doesn't exceed past the eye, but we can just grab it and keep it from coming loose on us. And again, just being conscious of these, this thread base overall. We'll go up to the eye, give it a half hitch. And then we can polymer it forward. Just some nice touching wraps. I'll trim off some of these starting feathers because they're gonna flare incorrectly for me. So we'll get those out of the way so that we get a nice wrap down and that they're coming off 90 degrees. So we can do one wrap on top of itself there and then work forward. There we are, so five or six wraps forward towards that hook eye, leaving yourself enough room to finish the fly off. Come back on it and I like to work my thread right up against where that hackle feather is before going up and around and behind it and that'll help you pre help prevent trapping additional barbels that you don't want to. You can come in and click out that excess and then give it a whip finish. And we got ourselves a big old juicy dry fly for when that lake activity turns on. If you're anything like me, you're already thinking of ice off up there in the mountains. 
So that's a nice adult coronamid. Again, just a good dry fly to have. If you're fishing some still water, coronamids are so prevalent. Uh, make sure you have some adult imitation so that you can get some nice dry fly eats as well. But uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up for the video. We appreciate that. Check out the description for the material list and then get all your fly tying needs at avidmax.com. Have a great day.